All right, you may recall a few exercises back. In passing, I mentioned that you can use the add noise filter to match levels of noise inside of an image. So the idea is that if you have two photographs that you're merging together, and they were shot with different cameras, different ISOs, they have different levels of noise, then you can use an independent layer of add noise in order to simulate a smooth transition between the two images. But we might want to do exactly that inside of our final composition, which is shown here. So this is that final version of the corrected photograph as opposed to the paper texture image. It's called finalfeelers.psd, found inside the 16 smooth folder. And notice what we have going on here. I'm looking at this area in front of the butterfly's face. We're going from this region that has a fair amount of noise inside of it. I left that noise intact because it wasn't seriously contending with the detail. And then we all of a sudden go to this area of no noise whatsoever in the background. Now, that's going to work out fine if I decide to print the image. So if I go up to the View menu and choose, for example, Print Size or press Control alt 0 Command Option 0 if you loaded D keys, why then we're not really seeing the difference between the noise at this level. So everything's going to print out theoretically just fine. And you would try a test print just to make sure, of course. But my guess is this guy's going to have no problems when we print it, especially if we print the image at a resolution of 267 or 300 PPI, something along those lines. However, let's say I decide to display the image on either a very large screen for a client or I'm going to include a detail from the image on a web page or something, and I want to show every pixel inside the image like so. Well, then people are going to notice the difference between the noise portion of the image and the no noise portion of the image, especially I'll zoom farther in here. You can see how the noise just kind of drifts off because I just painted in the mask. I didn't try to use any super accurate masking techniques here, which I could have done. But even then, I would have a very sharp transition between noise and no noise. So in my case, it might work out splendidly if I went ahead and added an additional layer of add noise. Now, this might sound crazy because we just spent all that time trying to get rid of the noise. Why would we put it back? Well, this is going to be controlled noise. It will be good noise that we use as delicately as possible just to match things so that it doesn't look like there's a big gap between the noise and the lack of noise. And it won't look nearly as ad hoc as the noise that was captured by the digital camera in the first place. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here a few clicks and scroll the image over. Then I'll go up to the layer menu and I'll choose the flatten image command or press control shift alt F, command shift option F on the Mac. Something to note about this, I've mentioned this before, but I just want to make this clear. Once you choose the flatten image command and you merge all your layers into one, if you go up to the file menu and you choose the save command or press control S, command S on the Mac, you wipe out your layers, they're gone. I just need you to understand this. One of the most frequent questions I get is, I wiped out my layers, how do I get them back? Believe it or not, that's a very common question. And the answer, of course, is you don't. If you save the image without the layers, they're gone. What you need to make sure you do is you choose Save As after you get done flattening the image. So you still have a version of the image sitting around that's got layers inside of it. Anyway, once again, after choosing Flatten, it's a good idea to follow it up with Save As, Control-Shift-S, Command-Shift-S on the Mac. But to get back to where we were, I'm going to press Control shift n Command shift n on the Mac to create a new layer that I will call Noise, like so. And then I'll click OK. And then I might go up to the Filter menu, and I could choose the Noise command, and I would choose Add Noise, at which point Photoshop gets grumpy at me and says, no, no, no. I cannot create noise in an area of emptiness. I have to have pixels to work with. This is Photoshop talking. So I could add noise directly to the background layer, but I can't add noise to an empty noise layer. Good to know. Click OK. I've got a different way to work. In that case, let's go ahead and create a layer that's ready to go, that's got some color associated with it already, right from the outset. So press Control-Z or Command-Z on a Mac to get rid of that new noise layer, and press Control-Shift-N, Command-Shift-N on a Mac. Create another layer called Noise. Doesn't look like I'm doing anything different, but I am. I'm going to change the mode from Normal to Overlay right off the bat, because overlay is going to be our ticket to adding noise to the existing image. So choose the overlay blend mode. 
And then you've got this wonderful option right here, fill with overlay neutral color, which, by the way, Photoshop whispers to you, is 50% gray. Great. That's exactly what we want. So turn on that checkbox. And in one operation, we've not only created a new layer and named it, we've also given it a blend mode and filled it with 50% gray without having to dial anything into the color panel. Click OK in order to create that new layer. Notice it is 50% gray. But we're not seeing a darn thing because gray is invisible where the overlay blend mode is concerned. Now we can see our noise as we apply it to the image. So go up to the filter menu, choose noise, and choose the add noise command. This time, Photoshop not grumpy with you. Go ahead and zoom in on the image so that we can match the noise that's going on here. And that's too much noise. An amount of 20% is way over the top. What I suggest you do instead, and after all, we're trying to match the luminance noise, right? We got rid of the color noise throughout the image. So we definitely want monochromatic turned on. Meanwhile, Gaussian's a pretty good idea because just the way it distributes the noise, very useful. It tends to spread the noise farther out so that we're more likely to get white noise and black noise as opposed to just a bunch of low-level gray noise, which is kind of a waste of time, really, for our purposes. But what we definitely want to do is reduce this amount value. And what I recommend you do is start with something like 2%. And you're probably not even going to see the effect of noise at that level. I'll go ahead and zoom in on the image. I am seeing a little bit of noise. Notice that if I turn preview off, the noise totally goes away. I don't know if you're seeing this in the video or not. If I turn it back on, we do have a little bit of noise going on in the background. But if you're following along with me, you should see it. And then what I want you to do is press shift up arrow. Actually, shift up arrow isn't even enough. That just takes us in increments of 0.1. I hate the filters that do this, by the way, where you press the up arrow key and it takes you in hundredths of a percent increment. That gets you nowhere very slowly. Anyway, so I'll just enter an amount of 3%, and that's getting closer to it. Let's try 4%. Somewhere around possibly 5% is going to give me a good noise match, as we can see right there. So we have a decent level of noise in the background, perhaps a little bit too much. We're not really doing anything to the noise in the foreground because we're actually covering up that foreground noise with less noise than we had before. So it's just kind of jumbling the noise up. Notice if I turn the preview checkbox off, we just see kind of a different noise pattern going on in this region, as opposed to covering it up with more noise which just kind of clutters things a little bit. doesn't make much of a difference, in other words. And that looks pretty good to me. So about 5% noise is going to give us a halfway decent match. What you don't want to do is get carried away with the match and say, well, you know, that's more like 10% noise. We better stick with that because, really, it's not a matter of making sure that you absolutely match the level of noise. You just don't want people to notice that you go from noise to no noise inside the image. So don't overdo it. Very important that you don't overdo this effect. Just give it as little noise as possible. In fact, you know what? If I was really doing this, I would enter 4% noise or even 3% noise. But because I want it to show up on a video, I'm going to say 5% noise. And then I'll click OK. And that is an effective noise match created using an independent layer of gray, 50% gray, set to the overlay blend mode. And then you choose the add noise command. And there's something between 2 to 5% is going to work out great for you. Monochromatic, if you want to match your luminance noise, I don't think there's any reason to match color noise inside the image because you can get rid of that fairly easily. And then finally, I like Gaussian distribution, but you can experiment with uniform as well. And that's how you get rid of noise and add noise to an image here inside Photoshop.